Welcome back to 30 at 6. I'm here with Doris Benke from the University of Maryland Extension Cecil County office. Doris, thanks so much for being here. Hi. Thank you for asking me to come. Of course. So Doris is here today to talk to us about the lanternfly, which has arrived in Maryland. And so farmers and lots of other people who are concerned about the state's agriculture are on high alert. And Doris is here to tell us all about it. So can you tell us about lanternfly? OK, well, first of all, um, I wanted to express the fact that I'm not a person who has done research with the spotted lanternfly. I'm basically uh, concerned about increasing the awareness mm -hmm. um, and educating people about this new invasive species that has now come into Maryland right. um, so that people can identify it and people can take action and we can um, stop the population from being established in Maryland. So why should people be concerned? Well, people should be concerned because this invasive species is not selective to any one plant or any one item. Uh, it can feed on many different plants and crops. Um, as a matter of fact, the Maryland Department of Ag um, has made it aware and has been educating people that there's 70 or so uh, crops and plants that it can affect. Mm -hmm. um, and the spotted lanternfly is a leafhopper. Even though when you see it in person, um, it looks like a butterfly. Yeah, it's When pretty. it's flying around. And it's very pretty, um, and it's kind of concerning because it is so attractive. I'm afraid that people won't want to kill it. Right. But you have to realize that you can't judge a book by its cover. No. And just because it's so pretty, that's a great point. Does not mean that it's not going to be devastating to our environment, to our crops, and to the industry in ag. What does um, it do to crops? So the leaf hopper um, has a mouth, a piercing mouth part that will pierce into tree trunks. Uh, grape vines, other types of plants and stuff, and it uses its mouth part like a straw and it sucks energy and nutrients and things out of the plants and the crops. Right. So right now, um, you know, it's kind of late in the season for us to be worried about some of the crops that it affects uh, to a certain extent, um, but not really because it can still go in and pierce um, trunks of trees, uh, crops and vines and different things and suck the nutrients out. So then that means for those plants that need to survive on that through the winter, which mm -hmm. is called like a winter hardiness, for them to use that energy to survive, that energy is not quite there anymore because some of it's been drained out, so to speak, because the leaf hopper has extracted that through its mouth part. So they won't have as much energy to be able to survive through the winter and then have that that push that's needed in the springtime mm -hmm. to start growing again, again because that energy gets used up. So they use up what they have and then they just collapse and they die. So the plants could be affected that way um, from them feeding on them. Right, so, no, so not only does it feed on plants and not just the fruit of plants but the, no. the entire plant, but it, it interrupts photosynthesis. Well, it can interrupt photosynthesis because um, when there's a large population of the spotted lanternfly um, around all in the plant, they have to excrete and go to the bathroom somehow. Mm -hmm. So they excrete this uh, clear, sticky, sweet like substance. Yeah. yeah, that's sticky. Um, that's can, it's called honeydew, mm -hmm. um, which can attract other insects that could possibly do harm to the plants. But when you're talking about the um, the mold and stuff, it the honeydew is a sweet stuff substance that then attracts and creates a mold. And this mold is what they call sooty mold. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a black covering that gets on top of the honeydew, which then creates a black layer on top of the leaves and the plant and stuff. So then it prevents the sun from being able to penetrate right. and it interrupts in the photosynthesis, which could have a negative effect as well. Right. That again, prevents them from being able, the, the plants from being able to create energy that they'll need to mm -hmm. survive. So obviously it, it is, understandable that farmers are on high alert of the lanternfly because it, if it is detrimental to their crops, it is detrimental to the local economy. So beyond recognizing that just because it's a pretty looking insect, um, we shouldn't be worried about it, what should people do? Well, for right now, um, Maryland Department of Ag and um, other agencies are recommend, recommending us to be looking for the egg casings mm -hmm. because right now is the time of year where they're laying their eggs 
uh, for next year, and we want to break the life cycle. So right. if we can find the eggs, which is, um, it's going to be kind of hard because they're not really noticeable. They yeah. look odd. Um, they sort of look like someone has smeared some putty or some clay um, on things outdoors. And um, the spotted lan lanternfly likes to lay their eggs on smooth, somewhat smooth surfaces. Mm. So it could be anything outside. It could be your trash can. It could be your car. Right. It could be a building. It could be a piece of equipment, anything like that. Um, so if you're out and about and you're walking around and you happen to see something that looks unusual, check it out. Take the time to check it out. Take some and, pictures. Yeah. Um, Maryland Department of Ag is asking you that if you see something, egg casings, the instars, the nymphs, or, or the adult, any of those, any part of the life cycle, to take a picture of it, capture it and kill it, freeze it, put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it, wow. and then okay. send it to them at their um, don'tbug.md at maryland.gov. So if you see some of the egg casings, you're supposed to scrape them off into a Ziploc bag and zip it closed and stick it in the freezer. Okay. And make sure that, you know, nothing's moving, that, you know, of course they're eggs, but nothing's moving at any point in time before you send a specimen um, to the Maryland Department of Ag. Okay. So don'tbug.md at maryland.gov. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Doris. This has been incredibly informative. You're welcome. Thank you.